bank was mine. Can't you hear me when I call? <laughs> His real name is Sabrina. <laughs> Be aware, this is recorded. <laughs> um, music board, welcome. Southern California, Chris and Jay. Jay Rocket, which is actually not a product name, but a human being's name. <laughs> the mystery and the mystery behind it is now solved. Let's travel back in time. Motivation to build a pedal. Nothing on the market that you like, or? Well, I heard you kind of telling yeah. the story in there. So. I, I like the story because um, Chris and I, he was, it was actually Chris was like always telling me, try this, try this pedal, this pedal, this pedal. And we both came to the same conclusion. It still doesn't do this. Okay. I want it to do that. <laughs> Thus, it all started there. And then we basically took it upon ourselves to find somebody to help us achieve that first step. And okay. then we took it from there after that. We learned, but that's how it began. Was that at that point you were just thinking different pedal or you were also thinking different end? Because I mean they, they work together as a team and which would be then the next question, um, what is the perfect team in regard to amp to your pedal? That's a good question. Well, that is funny. <laughs> I, <laughs> I told it earlier, right? You know, Jay, he and I grew up kind of in that uh, you know, rack mount, 80s kind of thing. And I remember growing up, Jay had one of the Roland GP8s. Yep. And, um, okay. oh man, was that thing noisy. Noisy. <laughs> noisy. And I had my fair share. I had some of the, the Marshall racks. I had, uh, oh, what was that? That uh, ADA MP1. Yep, MP1. I still one. have one of those, the Marshall JMP1. All cool stuff. But Jay hadn't really had that experience. He went from the GP8 to more modeling type amps. Okay. And we actually, I convinced him to try, try a Carvin little $300 tube amp. Okay. And I remember he got it and he was like, you gotta be kidding me. He loved it. Like, yeah. But, but that, was the, that was the tube amp experience, right? Yeah. And well, welcome to the club yeah. of tube amps. And I was instantly hooked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Instantly. So I had had a ton of experience with all the vintage amps um, okay. over the yeah. years. That was just kind of my thing, I guess. But um, yeah, you know, there isn't a perfect combination, right? Because I, I think the the X factor is the individual playing the guitar. Yeah. Right. So I, I've had guys, sure. like I have videos that we did for our new guitars that we're doing where I had two totally different players playing the same guitar. For the same. It, it, just, it was completely same. different. <laughs> completely different. Yeah. Completely different. And good in their own right, right? And yeah. so, and that, a big difference between Jay and I when we create a pedal, we play so differently. It's complementary in a way, but it's also, it, my style versus his style might reveal some of the shortcomings of the pedal. So if, if you both like it, there's plenty of ground covered. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. That's the idea behind it. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. feel that way anyway. It seems to be working. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the tried and true, right? Yeah. You go back in time and... What did Jimi Hendrix use? What did Eddie Van Halen use? It was more like what was at their disposal because there yeah. wasn't a lot of stuff available. But true, <laughs> but that old true. school stuff just re you know what I, I think that it required tons of passion. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. It sounds crazy, but that's why Eddie or Hendrix or any of these guys made these things sound so good because you were just amplifying what was inside of them. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of guitar players today, I think, can can get lost in the mix. Everything is digital, everything is perfect. You know, like recording, it's not human anymore when, when every note is fixed, when everything is quantized, all of a sudden it becomes a computer. Whereas back in the day, you listen to old Zeppelin recordings and it was, time was all over the place, but that's what made it human, that's what made it yeah. listenable, that's what made it. They do fast forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's gonna sound authentic. Yeah. They just don't have his Japanese face. Chinese. Chinese yeah. face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That personality that shines through that we just found out in, in all the bands that are still around and all the music that we still love. Mm -hmm. um, is is there at all a digital way to get that personality shine through? Because so far like we are kind of stuck in the question. analog is world, are we? Well, but there were some futures. Uh, if you asked me that 20 years ago, I'd say it's, it's 
say no way. Never. Never. <laughs> yeah, uh, I agree with that. They've proven us wrong because digital is pretty amazing today. Um, you know, when you hear it in uh, certain applications, live uh, recordings, things like that, are you going to hear, feel the difference? Probably not. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that where much. the whole analog thing comes in is just amp in a room, amp on stage. You right. want to feel it. You, you want to feel it in your fingertips, but you want to feel it in your yeah. body. And yeah. I think digital does lack still in a lot of ways, yeah. but it's still great. So you're kind of like me, the, the life only works analog? Yeah, pretty much. The life scenario? Anything recording, anything that is just, let's say, a production instead of a, an, in, a gig that has humanity in it, yeah. um, it will work digital as well. Well, you think about it too, when we were younger, we would go to a concert and they would play the album that they were supporting, but they didn't recreate the album line. They, no. they had a rock and roll show yeah. with mistakes, with it you know, uh, whatever changes they might do, maybe a medley, something like that. Mm -hmm. It was about the visceral experience. It was rock and roll, right? Today, it's, like you said, perfect production. It's like you're hearing the album that you just spent $200 for a ticket to hear the album. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see that. I want to see, you know, like back in the day, the 80s stuff, the, the Rats and the Dawkins and the Van Halen's and stuff. You would go to see what those guys could do, yeah. not can they repeat the album. And we don't see a lot of that today. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a modern guitar player that you think could have survived back in the day of the Guitar Hero? A modern guitar player? I think there are some pretty decent players out there. But um, for me, in, in the time of YouTube, especially through Corona and all that stuff, everybody got so YouTube-y. And they forgot to play on stage. They do perfect stuff, they, they do recordings in the studio, in a live band scenario, but for me it's still different than being on stage. You have to deal with the room. You don't have a post-production behind it and all that stuff. It's deliver now. Live with your mistakes and get the crowd in because they see you are humans. If you just want to go out and have two or three beers and listen to some musicians that are trying to do their best and you always see the interaction between the band and it's fun yeah. to also listen to some of the mistakes they make because it's so human <laughs> but it drags me in more than a arena production. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, and we're lucky. We're lucky in the fact where we live. I live in Nashville. Yeah. Obviously, you know, a plethora of musicians, but you can go down to Broadway, you can go to the different venues and see authentic performances everywhere. Yeah. These are people that haven't, you know, been signed by a label and turned into something. These are people fighting their way to the top, and that's what rock and roll used to be. It was a battle to the top. That doesn't really exist anymore. Where he lives, you know, he's got you know, a buddy of ours, uh, Andy Wood, and yeah. his, his contingent out there where he does that uh, woodshed. Yep. And we go out there every year, and it's you know, great. I went this year, it was like, you know, I hate to name drop here, but the Andy Timmons, Eric Johnson, yeah. Mark Latier. Okay. And you've got to see those guys in a very non produced environment just doing what they do. And that, to me, was a lot more enjoyable than going to some big production. Uh, I agree, yeah. I agree definitely. But still, you told us earlier that the analog path is not going to be all of J Rocket in the future. Where is digital useful? Is there something you believe you cannot really create? Well, I think a lot of it is dictated by functionality. Okay. You know, um, the Christian world, big time into a lot of the really heavy digital stuff that create all these, you know, big, big effects. Well, there's a lot of things in digital that you just simply cannot do in analog. Okay. I mean, it was a challenge enough just to add tap tempo to our clockwork. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you can't get so, I mean, you probably could get even deeper into the timing with dotted eights and things like that, but there are so many, like, um, I guess, modern effects that have been created that didn't exist back in the day. We're always experimenting with the analog to see what we can do. And I'll never forget, this was a great story. It was in Germany. And we were doing basically like a small NAM show. And so dealers from all over Europe came to, uh, you know, try out products from, from different brands. Yeah. And next to us was, oh, it was a brand. It was a digital brand. Well, I won't name names yeah, anyway. They don't. And a friend of mine 
was their rep, and they were creating all these unbelievable sounds. And I, we were listening to the demos. Yeah. And uh, so we decided, hey, let's see if we can, every time they create a sound, let's see if we can recreate it over here. Okay. And then when they stop talking, we'll play it. <laughs> and we did. Okay. And, and we made sounds that were that and more. It was really cool. So it, you know, I'm not saying, oh, we make better stuff. It was that it forced us to really start getting creative with how we use those tools. So yeah. when I say it's not possible, it's not always 100% true because we were able to get some unbelievable sounds that, <laughs> that rivaled, you know, these crazy modern sounds that were programmed in yeah. specifically. So it was an interesting, uh, um, I don't know, I don't want to call it a competition, but it was an interesting uh, experience, that's for sure. But it, basically it's also an offer to everybody out there, turn the knobs. Yes. Find out what is in the box. Turn the knobs. Turn the <laughs> knobs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't play the pedal with your eyes. Play it with your ears. Just close your eyes and turn pedal or turn knobs until it sounds the way you want it to. That's what people forget to do. It's well, yeah. And it's funny that you say that because we had a line of pedals about this big. Yeah called the Pro Series pedals. Yeah. They were great, but they had knobs and switches and all sorts of stuff. We finally came to the conclusion that the more switches and the more options you have on there, just give more options for somebody to hate that pedal. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So we said, let's just simplify, and they can only hate it one way. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. So I hope you got the message out there. J Rockets produced by musician lovers, music lovers, that are kind of in the same boat as we are. We want to hear the live stuff, we want to hear you work with your pedal, enjoy the pedal. And the, the last question, Blue Sky. And on the edge of breakup, what would be my first J Rocket pedal? One, two, three, the blue, blue note. note. Blue note. Yeah, <laughs> easy. Easy, okay. perfect for that, especially the amp at the edge. Break it. And we, even though they're the same, we have the Tour Series Blue Note and the Pro Series Blue Note. The Pro Series Blue Note has always maintained um, a lot of interest, so we kept Absolutely. making it. Okay, that's the one I recommend. And not because it's better, it's because it has that hot switch, it gives you a little bit more option. We're actually thinking about implementing that into the Tour Series pedal. Okay, yeah, more things for people to hate. <laughs> more things for people to hate, but. Hopefully to you hate it, you have to try it first. That's true. Um, yeah. Thank you, folks. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Thank you. You guys are good at interviews. Yeah. I'm gonna get me a boss man, one that treats me right. Work hard in the daytime, rest easy at night, big boss man.